Welcome, viewers at home and on Farfa's Twitch channel to Build That Deck, the game show where players bid on how few members of an archetype they can include in a deck profile. Today, our contestants are MBT and King Scarlet. MBT, start the bidding on Ghost Trick. I can build a Ghost Trick deck with 15 main deck monsters. I can build a ghost trick with 12 main deck monsters. I can build a ghost trick deck with seven main deck monsters. I can build a ghost trick with five main deck monsters. I can build a ghost trick deck with two main deck monsters. MBT, build that deck. Shit, I thought you'd go down to one. I am gonna get crucified. This video is sponsored by TCG Player. I just love my daily routine. Driving 30 minutes to my P.O. box to see if the pantheisms I ordered in June of 2019 have been delivered yet. <sighs> Someday. Anyway, if you too have experienced this endless longing of waiting for your cards to actually show up, boy have I got good news for you. Introducing the first important technological advancement of the new millennium, TCG Player Direct. Direct orders arrive in one package, authenticated and condition verified. You even get free shipping on orders $35 or higher. Just make sure you're buying from that little blue logo whenever you shop on TCG Player. And that you're using my affiliate link. Direct will be available for all Yu-Gi-Oh cards starting February 24th. So get ready. Good afternoon, Jank enthusiasts. I'm MBT and this is 10 Minute Testing. Fluffle, altergeist, sometimes my deck lists miss. But it's not often that my deck lists miss, I am aware that they are missing, and I dedicate myself to continuing to miss consistently throughout the writing, filming, and editing of an episode. And yet here we are, presenting Ghost Trick. So here's the list, and I know, please do not leave the video, or at least if you do, let the ads play on your way out. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. So what am I gonna do with Ghost Trick? Well, we should start at the beginning. Ghost Trick is a series of monsters inspired by the popularity of old decks like Flip Control and Pac-Man. Each Ghost Trick monster can flip itself face down and nets you advantage when it flips back face up. This enabled a glacially slow and catastrophically unfun style of gameplay enjoyed by exactly the sweatiest guy at my local and the wardens at Guantanamo Bay. Am I allowed to make that joke? They closed that, right? Thankfully, this archetype designed to go into time game one never got off the ground despite like four waves of support. In fact, over dozens of individual monsters, only four main deck ghost tricks were ever really playable. Jiangshi, Mary, and Spectre were part of a supplementary engine in Spirits in about 2014, and Jack Frost was a hilarious inclusion in Spiral Lists mid-2018. For all their members, Ghost Trick remained an unplayable gimmick. Not a what if, but a thank the lord this wasn't playable. Until now. Like most legacy support, the new stuff makes the deck playable at the cost of removing all uniqueness, individuality, and ability to do anything that isn't just spamming special summons, but for ghost tricks I say good riddance. I didn't want to mill out my opponent with skeleton anyway. There are four ish new pieces of ghost trick support, and most of them center around the monsters that ghost trick has in the extra deck. This is a good thing, Ghost Trick Alucard was playable for a long time as toolbox removal tools for rank 3 decks, and Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief is a non-once-per-turn searcher, so it's not hard to see how a strategy focused on these two instead of… whatever the hell Stein is supposed to be, might actually win some games. Here's the plan. Any two 3-star monsters make Alucard, which can then rank up into a copy of Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief. She can search Ghost Trick Shot, a card with a big impact on your lines. By reborning the Alucard you detached, you can then rank up into another Angel of Mischief, add another Ghost Trick Spell Trap, and the shot back. From there, you can send the two Mischiefs into UDF Jail if you like, or if you have extenders, you can make a third one, search a third card, and end on their new monster, Ghost Trick Festival. Now unfortunately, outside of shot, there is not a single good other Ghost Trick Spell Trap. The closest thing we've got is Trick or Treat, which has the laughable condition that your opponent can pay life points to negate it. 
As a result, we're using the Ghost Trick Metaverse with Extra Steps Renovation, which can tag from our Ghost Trick field spell into the Floodgate field of our choice. Extranet, Summon Breaker, or my personal favorite, Necro Valley. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First, I want to give a really quick shout out to Monkey Fight TCG on YouTube. While my deck looks really different than theirs, they were the only ones I could find exploring the concept of using Ghost Trick as a mechanism for extra deck spam, instead of pretending the Jiangxi was viable in 2022. So first up are our Ghost Tricks. Realistically, we could be playing zero of these, but Festival does tag out for a Ghost Trick monster. Fairy is undoubtedly the best one, but we're also playing Jack Frost for its applications with the Field Spell. I'll talk about that when we get there. Second, I'm sorry I'm playing the Adventure Engine, but it's got too much incidental synergy with this archetype. Aquamancer is a free 3, which you need in a lot of scenarios, and setting up an Omni Negate before you commit to an Angel of Mischief is unparalleled. Speaking of parallel, next up is the Exceed. This card is good. It allows you to make Angel of Mischief in a lot of really strong scenarios, but it can't be the only thing you have. Because your line goes through Ghost Trick Shot, that means that you're going to have to reborn an Alucard in order to overlay an Angel of Mischief, which you can't do if the only way you've gotten to Angel is through through Parallel Exceed. That said, I would still play it. After that are a bunch of threes. Psychic Tracker, Psychic Wielder, Junk Forward, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, and Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit are shockingly all starters. I'm not playing some threes like Tour Guide because I don't think the number of cards in hand really matters too much for this deck, just the stability of your end board. Uh, and more importantly, I don't want to run up against the Adventurer engine. We're playing one copy of Effect Veiler. This card is just for a Selene line, though realistically there are other spellcasters in the deck, things like Aquamancer of the Sanctuary and Ghost Trick Fairy alongside the Link Monster. I just want one I can find off Hauk. For spells, we are on this card. Now, Ghost Trick Parade is a strange card with a really scary line of text on it. Your opponent takes no damage. Now, obviously, you can't win the game if this card is live, and for that reason, you might want to consider a less intense field spell like Ghost Trick Mansion, but the payoff is unbelievable. If your opponent declares a direct attack while this card is face up on your field, you get to add a Ghost Trick from deck to hand. You can pretty much prevent yourself from ever dying, going plus one in the process, by getting a Jack Frost at the end of a long chain that does not do lethal. That said... It's actually kind of hard to get this off your side of the field. We're not playing anything like Unicorn that can spin it back natively. You have to resolve the effect of Renovation. So if your opponent puts up a Negate before they go to the battle phase and potentially trigger this, you might have accidentally just lost yourself the game. Importantly, this is also your out to Necro Valley, though you can just set it at that position. Next up is Ghost Trick Shot. This is the best card in the deck. Special summons a Ghost Trick Monster from your hand or graveyard, then changes a face down Ghost Trick Monster you control to face up attack position. That second half is optional and does not happen particularly frequently, and you can banish it from the graveyard to target a Ghost Trick you control, attach a Ghost Trick from your graveyard to that monster as material. Next, we've got a copy of Necro Valley. That's our field floodgate of choice. I don't really like Summon Breaker, which I think is the other serious consideration. It only impacts main phase one, so your opponent can just do their third summon in main phase two and we'll never run up against it. Rite of Aramisia is obviously broken, as is Draco back, as is Journey of Destiny. I really like Triple Emergency Teleport in this format. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit is just so unbelievably strong against, oh, I don't know, pretty much everything. The Brave Engine, the Sword Soul setups, um, plus the fact that this can search anything is just unbelievable. Triple Infinite Impermanence and Renovation round out the lineup. In the extra deck, we've got one copy of Sky Thunder. This card, of course, is very good in any deck that plays a lot of Xyz, and we are on a ton of them. Three Mischief and three Alucard. You could maybe shave an Alucard, but I wouldn't recommend it. One copy of UDF and one copy of its little UDF. And then an access code talker, a Selene. I think that you maybe want to find room for a Unicorn. Uh, and I also think you might want to consider playing the Unicorn over the Selene. I think you need the extra monster just a little bit more often. And for that reason, I like this more. This deck doesn't really spam a bunch of monsters, just a bunch of specifically Alucard and Angel of Mischief. Uh, that said, there are scenarios in which the spin might come up. We've got a Halka Fibrax, Double Festival, another card you might be able to shave down to one, and Al Mirage for weird scenarios in which your starter is Ash Blossom and you have to get a Parallel Exceed online. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Danger Lunalite. Ceremonon, is that you? <laughs> oh, Tiger changed nothing. Our hand looks pretty good. I think that we will be able to clap our opponent's cheeks with this one. We're going to begin with a Junk Forward into a Psychic Wielder, into an Alucard, into an Angel of Mischief, adding the Big Shot from deck to hand. We'll activate Shot, bringing back the Alucard, and then overlaying again for an Angel of Mischief. Activate the effect to get a copy of Parade. From here, we can trigger the effect of the Alucard to bring back the Shot, and then afterwards, we can make UDF. Now that our opponent can't interact with us, we'll go for Aquamancer to get a copy of Rite of Aramisir. We'll fire that off to get a token to our side of the field, and then we'll set a copy of Fateful Adventure as well. We'll trigger that off of the normal summon of an Ash Blossom, kind of crusty, but it does work. 
Afterwards, we're going to add a Wandering Griffin Rider to our hand and then cycle the Draco back onto our token. We'll summon the Griffin Rider, summon the Tracker, go into another Alucard and another Angel of Mischief before activating Angel of Mischief one final time for renovation. Alucard again can put the Alucard back in the extra for next turn. We'll set the renovation, activate the parade, make the link, and pass back to our opponent. Our opponent's going to begin with a copy of Danger Nessie, American Sniper. There it goes. Next, they'll get a copy of Jackalope to hand, activate that, an American Sniper. Get that bad boy out of here. Chusinoko coming to their side of the field, they'll normal summon a bird. We use the Omni on this, which I should not have done. But that's fine. What are they going to do with a Leo Dancer anyway? They'll activate Yellow Martin. As they add the Serenade back, I figure I actually don't have to activate Necro Valley because I don't care about that at all. They're going to activate the effect of Leo Dancer, so I guess we can UDF take that and they'll pass turn. Huh. Strange. All right, well, let's activate the effect of Faithful Adventure just in case that set card is something I don't know about. We'll special the Wandering Griffin Rider, activate Shot as BM because it is negated by Necro Valley, and get in for well over lethal. Our second match is up against Prank Kids, and this is a remnant of when I had Nibiru in the deck. Theoretically, it's very funny. Sometimes your ghost tricks end up face down, and Nibiru only tributes face up monsters, but in practice, that happened so infrequently I eventually cut it. Uh, second reason I cut it is that this deck cannot out the token, which you might see in this match. We're going to begin with a copy of Junk Forward, followed by a Psychic Wielder to go into an Alucard. Any three here would allow us to extend past this, but ah, Valor on the Angel of Mischief is so crazy here. Okay, we'll go into Festival, set one, and pass back to our opponent, hoping for the best, and as we see the place descend, we realize the best may not be coming. They're going to begin with a copy of Lampseys to go into Miyamu. They'll trigger the effect of the Lampseys and the place. They're going to chain block the Lampseys so they can summon a copy of Fancies from deck, then chain block the Fancies as they activate the effect of Doodle Doe. They're going to use Doodle Doe to get Pandemonium here? A little strange, but does do the job. They'll go into a Rocket Ride and trigger the effect of the Roxies, chain blocking it again with the place to go into a Dropsies. They'll activate the Rocket Ride, bringing back the Doodle Doe, and I know that now is the time. We're going to fire off Nibiru. I had really hoped to activate the effect of Ghost Trick Festival, but you do what you have to. We'll draw, and the Ash looks like a brick, but does actually do the entire line. We'll go into an Alucard and activate it, targeting the set card. They'll, ah, in FIP. At least it did trade. Next, we'll go into a copy of Angel of Mischief, fire that, and down comes the Ash Blossom. Okay, fine. Well, we can still go to the battle phase and walk the Angel of Mischief into the defense position token, so that in main phase two, we can make a Zeus, at which point our opponent rocks themselves. That's fine. It at least gets rid of our opponent's token, and ours is just big enough. They draw for turn, and I'm so used to Master Duel, they don't have another Meow Moo. They're going to go for the Verte Anaconda here. We're going to fire the Infinite Impermanence. That'll negate it, and they'll just pass turn. Any monster does it, and Junk Forward is a monster. With normal Summon Junk Forward, go to the battle phase, and deal just enough damage to win this one. So, it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Tenyi Sword Soul, though you'd be forgiven for not knowing that, because this hand has no Sword Souls in it whatsoever. Our hand's kind of crusty too, but it does include a Rite of Aramisia, which is enough. We'll use it to get a token to our side of the field, and this time we're going to be using it for extension. We'll trigger the journey on the Ash normal. They'll Ash this effect, which means we are going to have to discard, but we're going to get the Aquamancer. We'll go for the Aquamancer, overlay for a copy of Alucard, and then go for a Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief. Our opponent infips this, and in these scenarios, I feel so ahead. They're starting on a four-card hand, which means we can play a little faster and looser. We're going to go Exceed into Exceed to get another copy of Angel of Mischief, and because we've been through the Alucard line once, we can get shot, activate shot, bring back the Alucard, and then Alucard into another Angel of Mischief. This allows us to add the entire renovation line plus UDF against a four-card hand. I'm feeling pretty good. We'll go ahead and activate Parade, set renovation, activate Aquamancer so we get the hard ones per turn out of the way, and pass back to our opponent. Now, this is played a little strange. They begin with a copy of Vishuddha. I should probably go for the renovation here. But they then Vishuddha targeting the renovation, forcing out the Necro Valley. I could have prevented the Banish, but it ends up doing the same thing anyway. They then go for Appears, and then ugh, Moye. We'll try to negate it with the UDF, but they have Forbidden Chalice, so as long as they can play this under the Necro Valley, they are still going to get out of it. They'll go for a Chi Shao. They'll activate the effect of the Chi Shao and the effect of the Moye, a drawing a card, and that is the worst draw in their deck by a lot. Wow. They will go for the Long Wand, and then Synchro Summon a copy of Baron. They'll trigger the effect of the Long Wand, dealing 12 to me, and then Baron to pop the UDF. From here, they can go to the battle phase. We'll trigger the effect of Festival, just trying to get them to negate with the Baron. They don't, of course, because the Fairy will not even resolve under the Necro Valley. Uh, does preserve our life total a little bit. We're not dead here, and we do have clean outs to most of this board. Uh, that Baron is going to be a problem. We draw for turn. Oh my god, that's so amazing. We'll go for Rite of Aramisia. They'll negate it, and guess what our top deck was? A second 
Ride of Aramisia. We'll go for the journey afterwards to get a copy of Wandering Griffin Rider equipping the Draco back here. We'll activate the effect of the Draco back. They'll chain Shi Shao just to banish something from the grave. And then we'll go for the Wandering Griffin Rider. From here, we can activate Shot in order to get back into Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief. We'll activate the Grave Effect of Shot to put a material under it, not to search, but to have material for a follow up Zeus. Now, unfortunately, this is as far as it gets. We can't really contest the Baron. They'll go to Battle Phase and go for the Wandering Griffin Rider. That triggers Zeus. They'll target the Zeus, and we let this resolve because we get to trigger the Alucard here in order to get back a copy of Fairy. They're going to go from 001 into Halk. They're going to use Halk to get a copy of Adhara. Can't go into the Aurorodon because the 001 is the target necessary for it. They'll just shut it from hand to bounce our token and pass back to us, but I'm feeling pretty good from this position. We're going to activate the effect of Journey. We'll send an Aquamancer to search an Aquamancer. We'll go for a Rite of Aramisia, get a copy of a token, activate the effect of the Aquamancer in hand to summon itself, and then link off into a Ghost Trick Festival into a Selene. Selene here gets a ton of counters. We'll activate the effect to bring back a Spellcaster, and while we don't have lethal here, I feel pretty good because most sword soul combos require two cards and we know they only have one we'll go in 453 hope that they fade a draw step and thank the lord they do all right let's go to game two so it's time for game two and ah uh, less good less good this is one of the worst hands the deck can produce the fact that we'll probably have to use the ash blossom as part of our combo means we honestly don't really have it available to negate our opponent's stuff. Uh, I might have to, depending on if they activate exactly that card. Okay, we'll Ash that card. Afterwards, we're going to normal summon a Taya. Wow, we'll infip the Taya, and they have the out in Dragon Cycle. Ah, feels like a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! right now is just showing your hand to your opponent. Do you have the out to two hand traps? I do. Okay, then I lose. They'll go for Chi Shao here to get a copy of Blackout, set the Blackout, and not a lot we can do from this position. We draw for turn. It's shot. Great. Another card I wanted to search. We'll go for the Journey here. We're going to fire off the Emergency Teleport, trigger the Journey, Journey, get ourselves a copy of Draco back, then afterwards activate Journey, which gets ashed. Okay, um, that is, that is gonna be all she wrote. So it's time for that all-important game three, and, well, if I was my opponent, I'd be pretty mad right now. Two zero zero ones in three games, what are the chances? We're gonna begin with a copy of Emergency Teleport, getting a tracker from our deck and following it up with a wielder. From here, you know the drill, we're gonna go into an Alucard, followed by an Angel of Mischief, we'll fire Angel of Mischief, and there is the Ash Blossom. Okay, well, we can set the Ghost Trick Jack Frost, make the Link Monster set to and pass back to our opponent who draws for turn, a copy of Sathana. That's perfect if they find a Moye, which they do, off of this appears. They're gonna normal summon this Moye, reveal the Sathana, and we will infinite impermanence. Now, they don't have much extension outside the Emergency Teleport, and they don't have any extension now! E Infip moment. We'll go for the Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief here. They will Forbidden Chalice. Okay, fine. If you insist, I will proceed to the battle phase and just make Zeus. In main phase two, we'll overlay for the big boy himself and pass back to our opponent. They draw for turn another Moye, which is pretty good. They're going to normal summon the Moye. That's going to eat an infinite impermanence. And then afterwards, they are going to go to the battle phase. Now, I don't often get to activate the effect of Festival, but I do here. We're going to get Fairy. They will redeclare onto the Fairy. This will destroy the Fairy and allow us to reset Alucard, which is fantastic. This sets our opponent's monster and triggers Zeus. We're going to put Aquamancer under the Zeus for a secret tool that will help us later. We draw Draco back. We're going to flip up this Alucard. We'll overlay for an Angel of Mischief. We'll activate Angel of Mischief for a copy of Shot. We'll trigger Alucard, putting the Fairy back in hand before firing Shot in order to go into Alucard in order to trigger Shot and put a card under it so we can pop our opponent's set monster. <laughs> That's pretty sick. We'll go for Angel of Mischief. They will Ghost Ogre, cutting us off UDF. So now I get to trigger Zeus again. And because I will have two activations on a four material Zeus, I'm free to activate it now to get this copy of Aquamancer into Graveyard. <laughs> so silly. We'll go for Aramis here afterwards to get a copy of a token, and the Brave Engine is online. Fateful Adventure triggers. We'll go ahead and trigger the effect of the Draco back and special summon the Wandering Griffin Rider. Because we don't have a ghost trick, we can't normal any of our ghost tricks, and we're a little bit off lethal, but we're pretty close. We'll attack directly and pass back to our opponent. They draw for turn, facing down a festival and everything else, and that will not do it. They're going to go for Ashana. They'll summon that. Afterwards, going to make a monk. Trigger the effect of Ashana. That will meet our Ash Blossom. They will special summon the Thana and normal summon the 001, and even though it's a huge minus, I do Zeus here because it wins us the game. So they'll pass, we draw, we proceed to battle, and that is all she wrote. So we're back with the deck, and huh, that was, um, really good. Oh no. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, there's a lot going on here. The incidental synergies between the engines, the fact that you can set over your own field, the hand traps being starters, and it's really a thing of synergistic beauty. Two, wow, the adventure stuff is broken. A free three if you don't have an extender, an omni before you make the second omni, non-destruction removal you don't have to commit anything to, I mean, sheesh. And three, the end board is remarkable. UDF is a hell of a card. I am so glad I will be seeing it less after the rest of the limit. And the cons. One, 
I think the field spell swap is maybe a little bit of a gimmick. You need an extender or to open a third of it if you want to find all the parts necessary, and all that is just to accomplish a floodgate that screws you up as well. Two, the link is not fantastic. It turns out a card that only pluses you if your opponent refuses to read isn't nearly as good as you might expect. Realistically, it's probably worth cutting the main deck ghost tricks for this reason. And three, parade is cope. Just play mansion. All in all, this was solid, but I think the more realistic approach for this is to play it less all-in. Something like two mischief, one alucard, one shot in a deck like Phantom Knight for a super easy UDF line before you commit to Rusty. Uh, but the extra deck in Phantom Knight is really tight. I just find it hard to believe that this isn't playable somewhere. First one to a roared on this into a list gets a free top on me.